Hello, this is the video tutorial for the project My Kind of Music. My name is Pericles Rocha, and I'm going to walk you through our project description and some of the main features in the project, including a demo. So today we'll discuss, we'll do a brief introduction of uh, the problem statement, uh, what is the project that we've built, My Kind of Music, how it works, some of the implementation details, and then we'll do a quick demo. In a lot of cases, folks look for music in order to boost um, any feeling that they are um, experiencing currently. There's a lot of research that tells um, how music helps boost uh, an individual's happiness, how it helps reduce anxiety, or how it helps enhance uh, your current feeling. So what if you couldn't find a song that augments uh, what you're feeling or what you want to feel? People have pondered about the possible therapeutic and mood boosting benefits of music for centuries now. There's some research on this area, and our idea is to propose a song to the user based on their desired mood and some uh, keywords. In essence, we've built a recommendation system that suggests song to a user based on their desired mood and a few keywords. So this is a screenshot of our application. I'll show you the application running in real time. The user picks one of the five moods here where this is very sad, sad, neutral, happy, and very happy. And then they tap a few keywords here. And then the recommendation engine provides uh, 10 songs that we suggest uh, to this user uh, based on this mood and those keywords. The way it works is the first step, uh, we've obtained a database of 3,000 songs from an open source project. And this database is essentially um, uh, comprised of uh, text files. Each file is one song. There's, so there's about uh, 3,000 different files on this database organized in folders. Uh, what we do is we discard any songs that have short lyrics. Uh, we found that some songs, they will have just one or two words that they repeat all over the songs, and that doesn't help us too much in terms of doing the sentiment analysis. So we discard any songs that have less than uh, 24 words. Uh, we also discard at this time any non-English lyrics. We, for the focus of this project, we were focusing only on English uh, lyrics, and then we do other minor data uh, cleaning tasks. So once we've clean the data, the next step is to run the actual sentiment analysis and to create the indexes that we'll use for text retrieval. Uh, the sentiment analysis engine, the way it works is it looks at the body of a song lyrics and then it determines if this song is very sad or very happy or anything in between. So we assign a score, uh, like a sentiment score to the song that varies from a scale from one to five and then this scale uh, determines if this song is very sad, sad, neutral, happy, or very happy. So we build a database where we do uh, some pre-processing and then we do a batch processing really of all of the songs and we categorize them ahead of time. After we do that, we build our um, indexes, uh, the reverse indexes and the dictionary needed for the text retrieval engine. And then the next step is the web application. Once the database has been built, uh, we offer the user with a web-based uh, application built on a Python and Streamlit. Uh, this application performs user queries uh, using a rank BM25. Um, and then uh, it can check for profanity. So if a song title has some profanity, we've implemented a feature that actually masks the profanity in the text of the um, song names. Uh, that's a user option. So if they still want to read uh, when there's profanity, we'll show them to, to 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 those names, no problem. And 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 in the results, we'll link actually the the song to a YouTube search so that the user can Im immediately start to listen that song. As far as the implementation details, there's really three steps to this. So there's a data preparation step, there's the application deployment, and then there's the user experience. So data preparation is uh, runs on Python, and this, this does all of the steps that I mentioned where we do data ingestion, uh, data cleaning, uh, song categorization based on, on the sentiment analysis, and the creation of the dictionary and reverse indexes. The next step is how do we deploy this application? So as, as mentioned, this app runs on Streamlit with Python, and it can be deployed locally on your own PC or to any web platform. Our live demo, uh, we deployed it into a, into a Docker container, and, um, and we published it 
in um, in Azure App Service. So it's live on the internet for anyone to use it. And then the user experience is once the application is deployed, the user simply clicks one of the uh, emoji faces, one of from the one to five scale, from very sad to very happy, and they type a few keywords, and the users are presented with 10 results that include the uh, YouTube search links. So let's go ahead and see a demo of the application. And I'll follow the same steps described here in our GitHub repository so that you can follow along with me. So if you go to our repo, the readme file describes those steps. You only have to come to the uh, installing the software section right here. OK, so the first step is to switch to the directory where you where you want to uh, clone the project repository to. So I'm going to say uh, that this is my directory. The next step is I will clone my repo here locally. So I have all of the code files and the database locally on my machine. Um, the next step is I'll switch to my uh, project repository. So now I'm, I'm on C demo course project. And now um, this is an optional step, but I'll go ahead and create a fresh Conda environment. So I don't mess with the existing environments that I have. I recommend you do the same. And I'll name this my kind of music. That we tested is 3.8.12. So this is going to create a new environment from us for us, a fresh environment. Okay, now that the environment is created, I'll go ahead and activate it. And here we are. Now we are using the Conda environment for our new environment here. Uh, the next step is to install pip in case you don't have it. I think I already have it on this box. But let's see. Yeah, I already had it. So in case you don't have pip, when you do this, pip is a package manager um, which you will use to install the, um, uh, the project requirements. So if you already have it, fine. If not, this is going to install pip for you. Now, what's really important is we want to run pip. We have a requirements file um, in the project that lists all of the uh, packages that we need in, the, in their versions. And you can run pip and just specify this requirement, uh, this requirements.txt file so that it will install the packages automatically. However, you need to run the pip instance that's deployed to your Conda environment. Otherwise, it's going to install the package on the global environment, and we don't want to do that. Now, if you do Conda uh, and uh, Conda and list, this is going to tell you the directory. Uh, it's, it's going to tell you all of the environments that you have here and the directory where your environments are. So what I want to do is I want to go to use pip from this environment here. And in my box, I know that it's on users, my username, anaconda tree, and uh, my kind of music, that's the name of the environment. And then the rest you can pick from the instructions here. So it's going to be scripts, and then pip.exe. And then I'm going to go install dash r requirements.txt. So this is going to run pip specifically on the instance of pip that's running on my Conda environment. And it's going to use the requirements.txt file to tell pip which are the packages that I need um, in order to run the solution. So it's doing that right now. It's downloading all of the packages and it's going to install them. This is going to take a couple minutes, so I may um, fast forward this um, so you don't have to keep waiting here. Okay, so um, so pip installed all of the uh, packages that we needed. Now the next step, we do need to download um, a specific uh, file for the uh, spacey um, package. So I'm going to go ahead and do now do that now. This this file is used um, by our uh, text retrieval engine. 
Now, uh, there is one part of our project where we do um, translation, where we do, sorry, where we do language verification and and the, the version of TextBob that ships by default, for some reason, it doesn't work by default. So I found a, an article on Stack Overflow that's described, that describes how you, sh how you should fix that. And uh, so essentially what you need to do is you need to go to your environment folder. So in my case, it's my username, Anaconda tree, and, and here's the environment that we just created. And then I want to go into the lib folder, uh, site packages. This is all described on the instructions here, by the way. So then I want to find the text blob folder. And, and I want to edit the uh, translate.py file. So let's go ahead and open this on uh, VS Code. And you see here on line 33, there's a URL line. I'm going to delete this line here, and I'm going to replace it with the line, uh, with the value that I have here on instructions. Let me make sure that the, uh, the coding intention is correct. I, I've saved the file, and I'll go ahead and close VS Code. That's it. Okay. Now, now that we have uh, successfully um, installed the software, we're ready to run it. Now to run the software, um, there's two steps. There's the data preparation step. Um, so let's say you want to add new lyrics, right? So let's say you go to the project directory and you say, you know, maybe I want to add some new lyrics to the database. So let's say you go to the D file and then you open the, uh, um, you know, one of the one of the folders here. Let's find Dream Theater, okay? Um, you know, we have some lyrics here. Let's say you add, you add a new lyrics file. That's the reason why you would want to run the data preparation step again. Um, <clears throat> so, so let's go ahead and, and see what it looks like. So I just want to run the data prep script. And, uh, and by default, if you run the data prep script, it's going to run uh, the preparation engine with a, with a verse scope. So this is telling you right here, it's running with the verse scope. But if I, you know, after the name, script name, if I added a parameter like line or full, then it would run the sentiment analysis over the, the, the full body of the lyrics or each line at a time, and then uh, getting a, a an average. So this is going to take maybe three or four minutes. I'm going to fast forward this part as well. The operation just uh, completed. It took a few minutes uh, to complete, and uh, but it does give you details about how many songs it found on the source directory, um, how many were non-English songs, how many were short lyrics, and all of the remaining lyrics, um, how many were categorized by mood here. Now you notice that it says that log file uh, was successful, successfully written to uh, this um, uh, path here. If you open um, the solution directory and go to logs, you'll see that there's a log file here that fully details to you um, everything that happened, all of the uh, lists, uh, all of the songs that are non-English that the engine uh, detected, and all of the details about this run here. So I encourage you to explore that. Okay, so now that the uh, data preparation phase is concluded, we are ready to run the app. So if I go down here in instructions, um, the, the very last step that we need to run is to launch Streamlit and app.py. So app.py is our um, application file. I'll go ahead and run this, and this should open um, the application in our default browser. I'm going to bring it here to the, to the center. So that's it. So here you can select a different mood. So let's say, you know, I want to select the happy mood, and I want to say, I love you. I want words that are similar to I love you. So the application gives me some results here. And if you click any of the results, you see that um, uh, the user is sent to YouTube, um, where this is a search um, feature of YouTube. So you can easily find the songs and start playing them as you find. There's also a profanity filter. Uh, which um, for the sake of, of this demo, I'm not going to show, but if you use some bad words or if the song names have uh, any profanity on them, but using the profanity filter, this will mask any of the contents so that uh, the profanity words are not shown to the user. So 
um, like this. This is the example right here. So if you uh, if you notice some of the words here who are curse words were uh, masked and then the engine adds the explicit word to the end of the uh, song name so that the user knows that th this song may have explicit content. In summary, my kind of music is a recommendation system that suggests songs to a user based on the desired mood and a few keywords. So if they want to boost their happiness or if they're feeling sad and they like to feel a little blue, uh, they can pick one of uh, desire. They, they can pick the desired mood and just type a few keywords and get some recommendations. The application uses sentiment analysis and text retrieval techniques to categorize songs and retrieve them to users. And it is deployed to users as a web application, so it's very simple to use and very simple to deploy as well. Thank you.